Je vais noter quelques, euh, quelques détails de ce que vous avez lu ici sur la transformation. Comprenez-vous la différence entre... You would satire. Oh my gosh. Two, three, four, mm, five, that makes me so six, mad. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is Tori a legal Scrabble word? This is the biggest tournament that that I've been to. There's something like 200 players here. So it's rare that I get a chance to be in a field with um, with people who are past national and world champions and who really um, who really are the are the upper crust of the games. This black symbol bag here is my Scrabble gear. The purple bag is a couple of uh, clothes and my schoolwork that I'm going to try to do on the side because we've got a six hour trip there and six hours back. It's been kind of a rush but I'm just about ready for the big getaway. Um, this is my boy Eli, my, uh, my daughter Hannah. It's um, kind of tough to leave him for a weekend but um, these scramble things only come along once or twice a year that are really accessible for me so uh, I'm excited about going. And, uh, when I was in College uh, of William and Mary as a freshman. I have a, I had a friend named Matt. He was pretty serious about Scrabble, and so we ended up playing about 200 games our freshman year. You know, we'd have sessions where we'd play two or three games a night. And at that point, I decided I really wanted to try to get good at the game. So I joined the National Scrabble Association, uh, which is the uh, sanctioning body of these mm -hmm. tournaments. Uh, we played a little bit when we first met, but. I don't play at all, <laughs> like he does. You pack the car, Atlantic City, can't be too far, another season, another reason for playing Scrabble. <laughs> Scrabble CD-ROM, Scrabble page a day calendar. Uh, these people will buy anything Scrabble related. I'm in the casino division. I'm here to balance the marital scales while he's playing board game. I'm hitting the uh, casinos. And when this prints up, I just need you to sign. Harry, what's up? I didn't know you were going to be here. Fantastic. Well, I am what I would refer to myself as a garden variety expert, meaning. Uh, one who's worked at the game well enough to play it with a certain level of competence, but not one who's world class. So, and we find out. Unacceptable. I took an early lead with an early bingo, but um, Verna, my opponent, got two bingos right after that, and she went into the end game with a little bit of a lead. And I had I had an awkward rack that included uh, three O's and a U and and an E, but um, there was a loose Z, and I was able to play off two of the O's and the U by playing Uzo, and um, my rack improved to the point where I was able to. Uh, make the game-winning play of NARC on my um, next-to-last turn. As it stands, I'm one of about 10 undefeated players. I'm going to be playing against, um, I would expect, the, the upper tier of the expert division, so those are going to be some tough games, but I'm looking forward to playing against the best competition in the area. I played a game that's full of lousy racks and repeat letters and more much more than this one rack had five eight <laughs> you shake the bag you draw an A a great beginning can't wait to play it wouldn't kill you to smile, you schmuck. It's only a Scrabble Ray. I thought of it about eight years ago. And I wanted, you know, a little fun thing. You know, the first time we had everybody bring in a baby picture. 
and we put them on the wall and everybody guessed who they were. <laughs> so how many years in a row can you do that, right? So then we decided a talent, a Scrabble talent show would be fun. We started doing that. So that went over well. Uh, the media frenzy over NSA member Stephen Francis's book, Word Freak, has had major repercussions for many prominent Scrabble players. Richie Lund, whose numerous tattoos were documented in the book, has taken his dedication to the game to a new level. He has announced that he will have his NSA membership number tattooed on his member. <laughs> The scene opens with 98 tiles about. The Q and the blank are glaring at each other. A, four E's, L, L, N, S, 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 five S's, U, V. Uh, that's a, value nessus. Value nessus. Value less less says. Value less less says. Barry first played in the tournament, I believe, in 1990, maybe. No one knew who he was, and he won the novice division. In fact, I believe he won all his games, so his rating soared, and he, by the time of the next year's tournament, he was an expert. And I believe the following year, he won the expert division. Uh, and the same thing sort of happened to uh, Marlon Hill. Uh, my people had told me about Scrabble tournaments. Uh, you know, told me it was a kind of a big thing, but I'm from the inner city, and as of like 16, 17, it wasn't no hats. But as I got older, you know, one of my uncles took me to the damn tournament, and I won, and then I met him, and he told me that the Nationals was worth $10,000 at the time, and I was like, what? $10,000 for this bullshit? You know, so I, I went to the Nationals. My second tournament was the Nationals. Challenge. <laughs> it definitely helps to, to know foreign languages, um, to play Scrabble. You just have to know which words are, uh, you know, which words are acceptable and, and which ones are strictly far, and that's all. On second, second, second opinion here. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> It's no good. S A U T E E French teacher. <laughs> Marlon is a social animal. He's he's really a loving person. He wanted to see who the new kid was in the novice division who was who was winning. So he came over and introduced himself and you know, and he saw that I could that I could play the game with some competence. So um each time I've uh, each time I've been back at a tournament, normally he's been there. Yeah. <laughs> the second game I played against uh, Ron Teekert, he's a past national champion. It was uh, a feeling of elation and I guess a feeling of somewhat of a monkey off my back because in the previous Nationals, I'd been one of the two or three favorites to win, and I, I hadn't. <laughs> I had a good game. I fell behind early, but I was able to get um, Encoder and Yankers, uh, two bingos worth 70-some points each, and, and take a 50-point lead. And um, So ordinary plays wouldn't give me a chance to win, so I had to do what's called fishing, fishing to try to bingo at the end and I set up a spot on one side of the board so that my opponent would have to choose, should I draw a bingo, my opponent would have to choose which side to block, not knowing exactly what I had because there were still tiles left in the back. And at the end I ended up blocking the wrong spot and he was able to bingo in the spot I had left and win by about 30. Got me satisfied. Challenge. What's the plan? It's a free challenge. Oh, okay. Well, it's acceptable. Nice yeah. game, right? I didn't know where to Did you bingo out the Yeah, board? I know. I, 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 that's why I wanted to leave two in the back. Can, can you turn the board? I just it makes it almost go. impossible. You've got to go for this side. Did you bingo out the I mean, Not that I plan on it. Thank you, Greg.
Hey, you could just yeah. some more hand to silence. Yeah. Oh, I understand. I know. Wow, he gave it up. No. Maybe. I didn't see any possibility. What's the score? The players accept. Wow, he gave it up. Nice play. Nice play. Yeah. It was 70. Played Matt Graham in the next round. That's kind of like jumping from the frying pan into the fire. I'm doing a story about a guy named Matt Graham, who's um, one of the Scrabble players from New York. He um, is like, you know, pretty, pretty obsessive, hardcore Scrabble player. And just it's interesting to see the, um, the sort of contrast between, you know, these people who just enjoy it as a regular, you know, game to have fun with and the people who just kind of like, you know, live and die by, you know, what tiles they draw. I only ever played Matt once. And and I uh, didn't beat him that time. Unfortunately, tiles just didn't go my way, and I didn't beat him this time either. Uh, this is the only game in this tournament so far where I haven't been able to lay down at least one bingo. And um, Matt got three. He got um, Undraped, Venoming, and Uralites. Uh, he ended up beating me by 130, so that's you know, my forgotten game for this tournament. <laughs> my next game against Marlon was kind of like a watershed game. You know, If I could win that, I'd get to five and two and have a chance at being in contention for something. And, if I lost, I'd be at four and three, so I'd be back in the pack. Against Marlon, I drew extremely well. I um, picked up Sabred on my first turn, and um, squirted on my third turn, and air dates on my fifth turn. At that point, I was, um, I was 150 points up. But, uh, Marlon's a fighter. He fought back. He got by with one uh, phony bingo against me. I let him by with a phony. I'm always doing that. <laughs> He played it so quickly, he announced his score, and his hand was in the bag before I'd really looked at it. And um, then he played a beautiful nine-letter bingo long boats, which covered me two double-letter scores, and he got 94 points for that. So, uh, so he was right in the game. And then I played, um, I played a fourth bingo later on, rebating, and. Um, and I was just able to hold him off, even with my four bingos. Uh, I only was able to defeat him by about 40. But this, uh, this was a, a funny kind of blocked up game. We were making parallel plays, and the board was kind of closed down. Um, I won by about uh, 50 points. I was playing against Bob Lynn, who's a really um, really top player from the Washington DC area. And I played a phony, which was the only phony I played in the tournament. I, I mixed up a couple of words and uh, Bob challenged my nude right off the board. Uh, got the word needier down, hooking an N onto nude for noon. And um, I couldn't quite get my racks untangled. I did get one bingo toward the end, but um, it wasn't quite enough. I, he got the better of me yesterday. He got Uh, seven and three still got a chance at something. And I had a few, uh, I had a few brain farts that, that game, but I managed to draw well and hung in there. It was going well. I was seven and three, and uh, after that, I was paired against Lynn Cushman for the next to last game. She's a strong. Uh, player, all year from the New York area, me. She uh, bingoed on her first turn with the blank, and I was able to get a bingo back. And then she bingoed on the second turn with the other blank. I made a 66 point comeback play with the Z. Then she used the X for 44, and, and after that, my uh, my racks were somewhat difficult. I wasn't able to overcome the deficit, and I, I just had awkward tiles really the rest of the game. That was a loss that. Um, Put me at seven and four, and um, he's a good opponent. And he kept up with me in the beginning when I got both blanks and um, a lot of good miles. You've been talking a lot of trash at the table. <laughs> no, not at all. Actually, like I told you, like I told you, I'm one of the more vanilla players here. <laughs> and Lynn, yeah. Yeah, it's gravel language that translates into I don't throw tantrums. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my last game I played uh, Steve Tier, who's another strong player from the New York area. He uh, pulled out to a pretty good lead. I did pick up the blank and the Q and an S and played them all in one turn.
score. Uh, Quakey is 414 points, which is my highest scoring play of the tournament. But after that, again, I had uh, awkward tiles, and and uh, Steve's were just enough better that he was able to win the last game. So my final result was uh, seven wins and five losses, and I think that'll put me about 20th out of uh, the 44 players in the expert field. One, finish second. Third. Considering uh, for, that I was playing like shit, you know, it was pretty good. I'm going home with free toilet paper, so uh, I got uh, fifth, which doesn't pay, but I do steal from the hotel. I feel like even though um, it wasn't higher, it was still a pretty good result. Um, all the people I lost to were people I would lose to with some regularity, all rated higher than, than I am. And um, I beat some people, including Marlon twice, that you know are really quality wins. Um, and I think if I uh, if I were to go home and get a chance to study and, and play consistently strong competition all the time, I would have a chance to do even better. But um, it's been fun coming out, and seeing friends, playing a little trivia, a little poker, uh, eating food I wouldn't eat at home, and uh, just having a weekend off. So um, I'm going to head back and. Uh, get back to uh, get back to my family get back to school and that's uh, scrabble for me for the next uh, little while